Hello everyone. So coming at you today to follow up on a video that Wesley made. Um, he did a video about three weeks ago on the channel titled Is Run Collecting Dead? And I really like that video idea a lot so I wanted to do a follow up. Um, I'm a little bit late but that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> so to start out I'm going to kind of talk about my philosophy, what I think, uh, some backstory, kind of what led me to where I'm at today, my current philosophy, and kind of putting it all together. Okay. So, to answer the question, is run collecting dead? I would have to say no. I do agree with Wesley that if the same people who are buying now keep buying, uh, I don't think you'll ever really die. And especially looking at us, even though we've gone through some, I guess, some metamorphosis uh, through our comic buying over the years, uh, we're definitely not the same as we were when we started the channel. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, mine I'll go into, of course. But, um, yeah, no, I don't think it's dead. But with that said, let me dive into some backstory so I can kind of tell you how I sort of got shaped into my current philosophy as it is now, um, which I'll explain as we go along. So, uh, st starting at the beginning, um, I was one of those kids, I would say that my interests were always like really mainstream, unfortunately. Uh, when it come to th comes to things like this, um, so, I would say, starting out, of course, if you watch this channel, you know I'm a big Spider-Man fan. And then I like Wolverine, and I like the X-Men, um, and then DC, I like Batman. Uh, what's my favorite dinosaur? T-Rex. So, <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm pretty basic when it comes to that, which is it's one thing I wish I could change. Music, as a whole other story. Music is one thing I'm very different at, but that's, that's another story for another day. So anyways, uh, having sort of, if you're going to like comic books, I'm as basic as it gets on like my, my top heavy favorite superheroes. My one claim to fame was I liked Iron Man like years before he got his movie, but now if I say I like Iron Man, I'm just basic all over again, so that's kind of funny. But anyways, um, I, I would say when I was a kid and I fell in love with comic books, uh, fell in love because of reprints that I was able to to get my hands on kind of a combination of getting reprints and this had to have been around 2002 2003 these were books that came with action figures you could buy so I know I got a Wolverine one I got a Daredevil one so that helped shape partly some of my favorite characters even though Spider-Man was my favorite from birth pretty much um so anyways I was able to get my hands on some reprints and I have a, a cousin who was um, very very dear to me and he uh, actually gave me some Iron Man comics. This had to have been like 2003. I, I was really young. Um, and one was actually from 1970. I believe it's Iron Man 32. And I joke sometimes that I thought that comic was going to make me rich one day and <laughs> how wrong I was. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> that was sort of the start of my collection. Old Iron Mans and some reprints. Um, you know, slowly over time, I kind of just kept adding to the collection, just here and there. Like, my grandma would go to auctions, and if she found comics, she would buy me some books very cheap. That was actually how I found another DC title that I like. Um, it's been so long since I read it, though. I think it was called Watchdog. And then, um, or something like that. I'm going to kick myself later, because I probably got that wrong. And then also, uh, that's how I got exposed to Moon Knight, and how I started liking Moon Knight. Um, and this is back, like, before the MCU or right at the start of the MCU, so we were very far away from what we're at now. But back then, I wouldn't say that I was a run collector. Um, I would actually say I was a anything I could get my hands on collector as far as comics go. Um, or as I described it in my notes, more like a cheap but cool cover collector. So, uh, I didn't really have high-speed internet growing up, actually, at all. We had dial-up, so... I got on the computer like maybe four times a year because uh, it just wasn't worth it. I tried to watch a three-minute music video one time and it took an hour to download, so internet really wasn't much of a thing with me. Uh, so maybe like a couple of times a year I would get on there. I learned about Mile High Comics 
through some of the comic books that I owned. Um, and so that led me to their website, and that was the main way that I got comics growing up, was just ordering off of Mile High. So I did the opposite of what a lot of comic collectors do. I bought the cheapest, essentially worst grade comic I could get a hold of. Of course, on there it was the old grading scale. I don't know about these days, but instead of saying like a 2.5, you know, it would be fine, very fine, good, um, you know, all the way up to like near mint. But anyways, I would always order the lowest possible condition because it would be cheaper, and by my standards, it was it was okay anyways. <clears throat> so um, that's how I got my collection going. I was I didn't have the luxury of even being a run collector because if I would try to get two or three comics in a row, inevitably. I would run into one where they didn't have a low enough condition for me to be able to afford it. Um, so with that being said, uh, <laughs> Wesley referenced this before, but I had finally gotten some comics into a run, and it was uh, the Age of Apocalypse comics. I got one through four on X-Man, and I got one through four on, uh, I think it was Weapon X, it was the Wolverine story. <clears throat> so I, I figured out that all those stories and, and several more, of course, combined into this one comic, and it was I think it was called like Omega X Men, something like that. It had a really cool foil cover, and so of course that book I found it for ten bucks on Mile High because it was just in a certain condition where you had to pay ten bucks for it. So I bit the bullet, I did it. That was a big step for me, and as Wesley told you in the video, that was the most I'd ever paid for a comic, probably. For a 10 or 11 year span, um, something like that. Uh, literally, that is the most I've ever paid for a comic. And I never even paid another $10 for a comic up to that point. Uh, something important to point out, way back in 2007, I went to Myrtle Beach, went to Barnes & Noble, and they actually had comics and like new comics on the shelves. And I bought a Wolverine comic a Spider-Man comic, and then like a collection of Wolverine uh, comics that I showed off in my graphic novel video. So that was an important trip because it did show me that modern comics were actually pretty cool, even though I was still really skeptical about some of the stuff I had seen, because all I could ever afford was old comics, so all I ever really liked was old comics. Uh, or when I say old, I mean like 90s, and this was the 2000s, so not even that different. Um... I point out that trip just because it was important, and the Amazing Spider-Man I got had no clue back then, but it was the story being told right after Civil War and right before One More Day. I just think the history plays into this, which is really cool, and it's not something I would even know about till, um, until we started the channel when I dug in and kind of learned that. Um, so, from that time, you know, I was like 13 when I went on that trip. So, I, I still loved comics, and I always loved comics, uh, but the only way I'd ever get them is just occasionally ordering through Mile High Comics. Um, so, leading up to the channel, we're talking, this is a, a long span, and of course, I didn't buy comics like I used to when I was a kid. So, uh, st we went to Gamers Haven, um, before, right before the channel started, and, uh, you know, it was, it was low key. It had it had comics, so I was interested. And I hadn't really been to a lot of places that had comics. I'd been to Battlegrounds, but back then they didn't have nearly the emphasis on comics that they do now. And so I didn't know there were any comic shops really near me or available to me. I went to college in Dalton and graduated before I realized there were like several places in Dalton I could really find a bunch of comic books. So. Uh, the channel is extremely important with this, so once I learned about all these places like Fantasy Factory and Battleground started morphing and learned about TJ's, um, then there was uh, Dr. No's and Second Charles. I did learn about Second Charles before the channel, and so that was probably one of the big ways I started buying some comics again right before the channel started, uh, you know, just a year or two before, not long. Um... I became a run collector. I say all that to say, all my background and everything, it led me to buying cheaper comics. I, to this point, still, I had not paid over $10 for a comic. I tried to pay a dollar for a comic every chance I could. and uh, But I tried to stick with Spider-Man, Wolverine, 
um, Batman, uh, Iron Man, occasionally some Moon Knight, and X-Man uh, kept that run going from the Age of Apocalypse. It got into its own thing and kept that going. So I was definitely a run collector because I'd never been able to piece together a lot of issues like one after the other to actually really complete a story. Um, I actually really loved annuals because that was one time you could sit down and reading and you would read a story start to finish and I love that because it was very rare I ever got to actually finish a storyline. Um, but at this point when I started to have you know money I was uh, had a job and, and I mean I wasn't I definitely wasn't well off but you know I could afford to buy comics from now and then or every now and then. Uh, so I was definitely a run collector when we started the channel and I had did not own a key comic to save my life. Easily the most valuable comic I had to have had back then was um, probably not that Omega X-Men because I found it in a dollar bin once we started the channel, which is kind of funny. Um, to that point, the most valuable comic I probably had was that 1970 Iron Man, which could have been worth less than 10 bucks. I don't know. Or I did have a Spider-Man number one, the Todd McFarlane run, with the silver cover so that was that may have been the most valuable so definitely not major wall comic top stuff at all um so let's see so when we started the channel I was a run collector um and the exposure to a lot of things definitely started working on me um at that point I didn't even buy new comics um well documented in the channel um so I took a plunge on new comics and started with the new run of um, Spencer's uh, Spider-Man run. Uh, I also bought, around this time, uh, the first Apocalypse. As Wesley mentioned, I paid $20 for that, and that was a really huge deal for me. And this was all at the start of the channel. So I was kind of getting exposed to new things. All of a sudden, new comics were available. Um, I had places I could actually go buy a new comic, because before, I really wouldn't know where I could even do that. Um, I took a chance on a key comic and got First Apocalypse, and, you know, in my head, I just assumed I'll never own a book as cool as that. Um, so just knowing it was possible was a very important step. Uh, and obviously exposure to cons. I think cons is a big one, because all of a sudden you're in the presence of a lot of key comics, and they're relatively affordable. I mean, I think if you're going to buy a really big key, your best bet on doing it may be, depending on your circumstances, doing it at a con compared to just walking into a store. Um, and of course, that depends on who you know and deals and things like that, but my opinion is con is the best place to do it. Um, so yeah, I think exposure had a lot to do with it. Wesley, in his video, attributed a lot of it to the YouTube channel and maybe feeling somewhat of a, a pressure or a need to show off really cool comics in order to, you know, make the video of better quality. Um, <clears throat> I, I, and I totally get where he's coming from because I had a similar experience, but instead of necessarily having to buy the cool key to show off, I think I gravitated more towards sometimes I didn't necessarily want to buy a comic that day because I didn't see something that I loved or maybe, you know, in the early days money really wasn't where I needed it to be. And uh, I would buy one or two things anyways just to have something to show off. I didn't really care that it was a key. I just wanted to be able to show something. So that's why it's very rare if you ever see even our early videos or I didn't have anything to show off for that reason, which is not a good reason. Um, but I totally get where Wesley's coming from. Uh, I also started learning more about comics history. As I mentioned, I uh, bought an ASM story back when I was 13 that I would years later learn is between the iconic Civil War and the iconic, or should I say, infamous One More Day. Um, so that is like a piece of history, and I was like, man, if I bought comics off the shelf back then, not that I knew where or had any money or could drive, but I would have like experienced all of those stories, which I think would be so cool. Um, I just, I just kind of missed it. I, w I wish I could have um, been a part of that history. Um, Something I'll mention that I learned about myself, I'm not proud to say, and uh, don't don't take this too seriously, but I, I think I have a touch of FOMO. And if you don't know what FOMO is, it's the fear of missing out. And so I kind of realized after that first con probably that 
anytime we go to a con or get a chance to go for like a special trip to a comic book store or something like I want a key I want something special to show off and it's not necessarily just because the YouTube channel like I touched on it's just more like an opportunity and I feel like I need to get something big something that would prove the quality of, of what I went to, to to show what's capable I've always tried to picture the viewers as like a younger version of myself and that's probably not our, our demographic but that's kind of the way I treat it is if our viewers our audience was made up of like 12 year old me I want to show them it's possible to get some of these books you never thought possible and I think that's a big part of what started drawing me to keys um, also 2020 happened and while I was already big into collecting keys 2020 was a year unlike any other obviously in the real world and then also in comic buying for me and I would say for Wesley and Jessica as well um, all the cons canceled you know everything shut down but it turned into a year <clears throat> where just some possibilities kinda popped up and I was able to get the the biggest keys I'll, I'll probably ever own um, Wesley mentioned I got my big book which was ASM 300 the first Venom uh, I also managed to get First Carnage as he mentioned and I mean there's there's several others I got Night Gwen Stacy died and I never thought I would own any of these and it was just kind of because of some circumstances not the bad stuff last year but just some other circumstances led to being able to get some of those and 2020 became the year where I was really a key collector and I think Wesley mentioned something similar I'm um, talking about himself so <clears throat> Uh, to touch on the YouTube channel again, I would say, uh, even though I said I don't really feel pressure to buy a key f for videos for the channel, um, <laughs> it is important to mention, I feel like there's no, we try to diversify, like we all kind of have our favorites out of the three of us who are on the channel, so um, it's funny, I've only ever been jealous of one book Wesley got, really. And it was ASM 361 First Carnage before I had it. And for Jessica, it was the um, First Silk, which I still plan on getting one of these days. And so that's never been like a motivating factor. Like, I got to outdo these guys. That's never been the way my mind works because we all have our own interests. So I'm when they get a big book, I'm happy for them. When I get a big book, they're happy for me, which I think is really cool. And we can just sort of support each other in that way. Um, so it's, it's a big accomplishment when you get... A book that is big to you and like it kind of gets celebrated on our channel which I think is awesome um, I started to really fall in love with surprising them uh, I showed off the ASM 252 which even though it was in bad shape just tried to sneak it by Wesley in one of our earlier videos like right way earlier videos <laughs> which is that's funny but um, there's 544 shout out to TJ's media I got that there today for a dollar Right, and then I also got number Jeez. 545. <laughs> All right, also TJ's Media. Um, let's see, what do I got left? Um, Is got, that Mephisto on the cover? I don't know. Okay. Got Amazing Spider Man number 252. Go on. And then I got Batman. <laughs> 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 Did you think you were just going to slide that on? <laughs> yeah, okay. I was just going to see how they reacted to that. <laughs> No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, wow. Uh, no, no, disclaimer, actually. And, uh, like, reactions are just fun. It's so fun to show that, hey, I got this book I've always wanted once I learned about it. So, I think that's a fun thing to look at. But let's bring it to a close or wrap it up um, with, with kind of how I am current day. I, I spent a lot of time on my backstory because my philosophy has changed so much when it comes to, to collecting. Um, whereas I started out as a, you know, a buyer who would just try to look for covers with Spider-Man or Wolverine, or I actually became a fan of Deadpool because of an X-Men video game on PS2. Basically characters I could recognize, I would try to buy them, like buy the cheap comics with them on the cover. And then I would just read the random story. It could be a part four out of a seven part series. I wouldn't know what was going on, but I would love it. And I never complained, but I just knew one day when I had the means, I would love to be able to finish a story. It evolved me when I got the opportunity into a run collector, 
and then exposure to the possibilities and comic history really led me last year to become a key collector. So where am I in 2021? I know that Wesley mentioned he is having a great year personally where he has kind of drifted back to run collecting and it's like some of the most fun that he's had comic collecting. He's, he's going back to that and doing a bunch of damage on his runs. I think that's awesome. I would say for me, I definitely have backed off of trying to buy the keys or even really seeking them out. And I've also made a return to run collecting. Uh, <clears throat> so it's, it, it's just great being able to find some things that I've always wanted to read. Uh, I've, I've gone back to trying to just fill as many Amazing Spider-Man holes as I can. Um, and it's through cheap comics. Uh, I've had some luck randomly with the comic auctions at Battlegrounds. Um, I've only really sought out like one or two keys maybe this whole year. Um, even though I've, I've acquired a f more than that. Um, but kind of uh, looking at everything, I sort of got a weakness for keys. Um, but I'm trying to balance getting back to the basics, especially this year. I think I've done a good job of that. Um, but see, the big infusion of new comics that I've taken on it's essentially helped my run collecting because the main thing that I buy these days is new comics. Yeah, sometimes people freak out over, oh, here's a first appearance of this, here's a number one of this. And I'm trying to stay away from a lot of that because I'm speculating that you're going to own a book that becomes a key. Or I guess it's a key right off the shelf either way. Um, you're hoping that it turns into a valuable book. But for me, I kind of realized a while back, I love my books. I never plan on selling them unless it's a book I just don't care about that much. So, with that said, it's really helped me focus where I've now established these rules that are getting me through and making me probably a smarter comic book reader and buyer. Um, and my philosophy now is I like getting a key, and I'm very proud of a key, if it's a part of the run that I'm reading. So, when a big Spider-Man book pops up and it's new on the shelf, or Batman, I'm proud that it's big because it's part of the run that I'm already reading. Um, for Spider-Man, getting sub 100s or just first appearances, you know, if, uh, rarely, but if I am able to get those, it's big because it's a run that I am reading and collecting. So to me, uh, just to wrap it all up, the best of both worlds is sometimes, I mean, it's, it's run collecting for the most part and occasionally being able to get a key that goes right along with your run, um, especially if it's one of your favorites. I've tried not to go for like, like a character that I really like. Like, let's say a, like a big, I don't know, like Cable. I like the X Men, but Cable's not like. I don't have to have first Cable, so I don't actively seek that out. Um, it's more like if I'm reading X Men, or X Force, or whatever you know, wherever his first appearance would be, or New Mutants. Um, it would just be nice if, if like he popped up and I'm able to get that comic. It kind of um, fills out both categories. And to me, that is the absolute best outcome. And it's the most rewarding feeling because it feels like you didn't reach and that you were meant to have this. So with that being said, is Run Collecting Dead? No, and I don't ever believe it will be. I think people will still mainly buy keys if they're within their interests and they're probably already trying to read that run or they at least read very similar. Um, I definitely think the success of Marvel movies and some DC movies right now definitely do affect things, but even though we live in the golden age of superhero movies, it may not be that way forever, and I still think you've just got comic book lovers who are always going to try to fill runs, maybe not as popular as it used to be, but it's never going to go away, and especially not if I'm still around buying. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please leave a comment below uh, talking about your philosophy and your opinion on everything that I talked about. And just thank you for listening. Um, please subscribe and like the channel. Um, we are the Nostalgia Junkies, Justin, Wesley, and Jessica. We like to show off comic book stores and just discuss all things comics and show off what we get. So we appreciate any likes or views or comments that we get. We love interactions with people watching the videos. So with that being said, thank you for watching. Have a great day.